Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn and I want to talk to you today about we were created to become like Jesus. You were created to become like Jesus. Uh, we've been going through the last 40 days of been reading the book, What on Earth Am I Here For? The Purpose Driven Life. It's a 40 day devotional book. Actually, uh, the revised edition is now 42 days. And we've been doing that at the church uh, where I'm pastor here in Lexington at Gardenside Christian Church. And if you don't have a church home, love to have you come join us some Sunday. Uh, we have services at 10 30 a.m. But it says, uh, day 22 just really spoke to me recently when I was reading that. And I want to share that with you today. I think there's a lot of nuggets uh, of wisdom, of love, of truth. And uh, one of the things I love about this devotional book, I've had people that are doing it for the first time. I did the first edition when it came out in 2003. And now, fast forward 20 years later, it has a revised edition from a few years ago. But I've had people been followers of Jesus for a long time to say, man, I'm learning things about the Bible and about God through this devotional book. And obviously, God's Word is first and foremost the authority, and that's where we need to go. The thing I love about this 42-day devotional book is that there's over a 1,000 Bible verses in it. And sometimes people get overwhelmed uh, by the Bible, and that's usually the enemy lying to you, okay? But most people are like, okay, hey, I could read this paperback book, and uh, get, get, it's just a great way for you to grow in your faith. Or maybe you're looking for somebody just to kind of study the Bible some together and just kind of grow in relationship with Jesus. It'd even be a great book for somebody that's not a Christian just to kind of maybe understand uh, about the what being a follower of Jesus is like. So I really encourage you to pick up a copy of What on Earth Am I Here For? The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. He starts off with Romans chapter 8, verse 29. This is in the message version. Uh, God knew what he was doing from the very beginning. He decided from the outset to shape the lives of those who love him along the same lines as the life of his son. We see the original and intended shape of our lives there in his him. And then Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 from the message says, we look at this son and see God's original purpose in everything he created. I mean, remember Christmas time we talked about when Jesus was born, Emmanuel, God is with us. And I'm so, so thankful for that. And know that I know that uh, God through Jesus just said, you know what? I want you to have a personal relationship with me, so I'm going to have to send my one and only son so you can see what it's like to be in a personal relationship with me and how I'm calling you to live. And I'm so thankful that Jesus, all the things he went through, God, Jesus, they never asked us to go through anything that he didn't go through. Being rejected, being criticized, being lonely, uh, not being accepted by family. Um, the religious people didn't like him, Okay. Uh, talked about earlier this week, uh, one of the programs where I just started watching the series called The Chosen, uh, based on the uh, Jesus uh, three years with the, the disciples and how he chose them and showed how he does uh, did life with them. And just so interesting, the different personalities of all those guys. And I just think it was really, really well done. I encourage you to check it out if you haven't seen The Chosen. Uh, there's an app called the Angel App. And uh, it's free, so I would encourage you to check out The Chosen. Or now, I believe, Seasons 1 and 2 um, are available if you have Amazon Prime or Netflix, I believe. But we're all created to become like Jesus. And, you know, that's why God sent him here, so we would know what it's like to be uh, in relationship with God. And, you know, from the very beginning, God's plan has been to make you and me like his son, Jesus. That's our destiny. And God announced his intention at the, at the beginning of creation in Genesis. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image and likeness. You know, that's just amazing to me that we're made in the image of God. So that's why when you say I'm stupid or I'm dumb or I can't do anything right, I'm an idiot. Friends, you're really, really uh, just saying to God, you know what? Hey, you know, 
I don't really believe that verse in Genesis that uh, we're made in your image because you're calling God an idiot and he's stupid and he can't do anything right. And I've been guilty of doing it, but uh, last several years, I really have uh, asked the Holy Spirit to convict me when I get to that point. And we all get frustrated at points, but some of you, uh, man, that's just been a really bad pattern. And I believe God's saying to you today, quit calling yourself an idiot or you're dumb or you're stupid or speaking those words that I can't do anything right. Because the Bible says right in the beginning that we were made in the image of God. And I also want to remind you in Proverbs that the Bible says that, you know, our words, they are life and death. Okay? The uh, book of James talks about words a lot, too. Maybe you want to read the book of James. But it goes on to say in this wonderful, jo- uh, wonderful devotional called Created to Become Like Christ, that, you know, we were made in God's image. And, you know, it's a great privilege and it gives us dignity. We don't know how uh, all this phrase covers, but we do know some of the aspects that it covers and it includes, uh, like God, we're spiritual beings, okay? Uh, our spirits are immortal and we will outlast our earthly bodies. We are intellectual. In other words, we can think, reason, and solve problems like God. We are relational. We can give and receive real love and we have a moral consciousness, We can discern right from wrong, which makes us accountable to God. You know, the Bible says that all people, not just believers, possess part of the image of God. And that is why murder and abortion are wrong. But the image is incomplete and it's been damaged and distorted by sin. So God sent Jesus on a mission to restore the full image that we have lost. You know, sometimes people often use the phrase like father, like son, to refer to family resemblance. When people see uh, our likeness in kids, uh, you know, uh, it pleases parents. I can remember even one time uh, somebody told me, he said, you know what, you you walk just like your dad. And I just started laughing. I'm like, really? I was uh, around 40 years uh, uh, old then. And uh, I was just like, Really? And so then I asked uh, my mom one time, she said, yeah, never thought about it, but you do. So, you know, it's amazing how there's things that we pick up from our earthly parents we're not even aware of. But here's what God's ultimate goal for us is. His ultimate goal for our life on earth, and this one's a little painful to hear. When I was reading this devotion, I don't like it, but I've heard Rick Warren say it now for over 20 years, and I believe it, friends. (laughs) It says, God's ultimate goal is, for your life on earth is not comfort, but character development. Ouch. Say that one more time. Some of you may have ran off the road or uh, you may get ready to stop listening to this podcast or watching this on our YouTube channel. God's ultimate goal for your life on earth is not comfort, but character development. I want to remind your friends that life on this earth is a dress rehearsal for heaven. And, you know, uh, I like being comfortable. Hey, what's the number one selling uh, chair in people's living rooms, you know, TV rooms? The Lazy Boy. (laughs) Yeah, baby. I mean, I've got a recliner, and, uh, man, I look forward to getting home in the evenings and sitting in that. And sometimes I read, but quite often, I have to be honest, I'm watching TV. And, you know, uh, uh, we can get all about comfort. Yet, I know that uh, when I get to go to uh, the beach, and one time I didn't get to go for several years, uh, couldn't afford to go on a vacation, and when I finally got to go back to the beach, uh, I ran into this guy, and months that we're talking, and he was a pastor, and he lived there. And so I was asking him, it was actually at a supermarket, out of all places, he had a shirt on with a church on it and so i just was asking making small talk we were both waiting on some deli lunch meat we were buying and uh he said yeah i'm a pastor here this was in destin florida and so i just said man i love the beach i said how long have you been here he said well, i've been here about five years now i said man do you, you you know i mean how often do you go you go every week at least once twice maybe uh, i know obviously as pastors you don't have a ton of free time but he started laughing he said you know when i first moved here yeah I did that, but he said, now that I've been here, he said, sometimes it can be over a month 
I've gone two months even, three months. Uh, to be honest with you, most times when I go, it's when we have family or friends that visit and they want to go, he said, I'm embarrassed to say, but I guess I take it for granted. And friends, I think that's one of the things that, uh, you know, sometimes when we get so comfortable, we take for granted all that God's done for us. And then when we get a little challenging season in our life, we realize that we need God. And maybe we get some areas in our life that aren't God honoring. We start, our mouth starts to be kind of critical and maybe uh, negative and maybe even occasional profanity comes out of it. And yet, um, you know, or we we just we're not God honoring, and we get comfortable, and that's not God honoring. So sometimes God has to kind of discipline us and put some things in our life to kind of get us refocused and back on the character development side. I do want to close out here just in the three and a half minutes we have left today about how God's Spirit works in us, how God's Spirit works in us. Uh, you know, it's the Holy Spirit's job to produce Christ-like character in us. The Bible says, as the Spirit of the Lord works within us, we become more and more like Jesus and reflect His glory even more. The process of changing us to be more like Jesus is called sanctification. I want to say that because a lot of times we've heard that maybe as like, oh, that's a big churchy word, sanctification. Well, friends, it simply means the process of changing us to be more like Jesus. God is sanctifying us, making us more like Jesus. And that's part of that character development. And, you know, one of the things that I'm learning is that, you know, that we can't produce the character, uh, reproduce the character of Jesus in our own strength. You know, we all sometimes make New Year's resolution or we think uh, willpower and we all have the best intentions. But let's be honest, they're simply not enough. Only the Holy Spirit has the power to make the changes that God wants to make in our lives. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, God is working in you, giving you the desire to obey Him and the power to do what pleases Him. But you know, unfortunately, sometimes we mention the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, church I grew up in uh, many, many years ago, they called it the Holy Ghost, and they didn't say it very often. And honest, as I heard about it as a kid, it kind of scared me. Uh, the Holy Ghost, oh my goodness, I got to sleep with the light on. <laughs> But, you know, uh, most of the time we mention that power of the Holy Spirit, many people think of miraculous demonstrations or intense emotions. But most of the time, the Holy Spirit's power is re released in our lives in quiet, unassuming ways that you're not even aware of or we can't even feel. He often nudges us with a gentle whisper, as it says in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 12. And, you know, here's, here's the deal, friends. Christ's likeness is not produced by imitation, but by in inhabitation okay christ likeness is not produced by imitation but by inhabitation we allow christ to live through us for this is the secret christ lives in you so i know you're like me well how does that happen in real life greg well it's through the choices we make we choose to do the right thing in situations and then we trust god's spirit to give us his power his love his faith and his wisdom to do it since God's Spirit lives inside of us, these things are always available for the asking. So I talk about on Hope is Here. You know, occasionally I'll mention about, you know, we're never alone. I want to remind you, you always have the Trinity, the Father, which is God, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus left, he said, you know, hey, I'm going to be leaving you the Holy Spirit, a comforter and a counselor. And I can't tell you how many times I've cried out to that Holy Spirit over the last 20 years, friends, since the flood, the bankruptcy, divorce, and then when I went into ministry. And now, as a single adult, uh, I need the Holy Spirit to help me, to comfort me, to guide me, to give me wisdom, to give me strength. And I'm so thankful that God freely, freely gives that. And I've got to make the effort to do that. Uh, at least eight times in the New Testament, we are told to make every effort in our growth to becoming like Jesus. So we just don't sit around and wait for it to happen. We ask the Holy Spirit to help us. We're out of time, but hope you're blessed today by we are created to become more like Christ. I'm Greg Horn, and this is Hope is Here.